In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins, and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love, and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people task to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for the health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome, brothers and sisters in Christ, to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. We are on the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our priest presider is the Reverend Father Mario Sabrewanite of the Society of St. Paul. He is a spiritual director of the Acts Catholic Prayer Community and is currently assigned at the Divine Master Retreat House in Ariccia, Italy. Let us join the Acts Minstrels in singing the entrance hymn. because we believe that God is not only powerful, but the God who loves us is like a real father. In Jesus, and inspired by the Spirit, we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Our brothers, Jesus and sisters, Jesus reminds us today that we are simply God's servants, doing no more than our duty. Having this kind of disposition reveals a faith like the size of a mustard seed. If we believe that God is the one in control and that our achievements are his, the more we become productive in our Christian life. For it is in weakness and humility that God's greatness shines. For those moments when we thought that we have our blessings, our strength, our capacities, abilities are our own and not gifts of God, 
so that we can join him in building the kingdom, we ask the Lord's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayers does not dare to ask. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The prophet Habakkuk voices out his frustration over God's delayed help. But God asks him to continue his work and to increase his faith. The first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord, I cry for help, 
but you did not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you did not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Timothy that the spirit bestowed on him is not a cowardly spirit. He should let himself be guided by the spirit in bearing witness to the gospel. The second reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to steer into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of, your, of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us give honor to the Holy Gospel. The word 
word of the Lord remains forever. This is the word that has been proclaimed to you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at the table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat? Put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So it should be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. Sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, the gospel reading introduces us to the petition of the apostles, Lord, increase our faith. Balikan po natin ang root word ng katagang faith. Sa Griego po ay pistis, which actually means trust, confidence, commitment. Magtataka tayo, bakit humihingi ng increase of faith ang mga disciples? And if we go back to their situation, baka ako din doon nung panahon yun will say, Lord, palakasin mo yung aming pananampalataya. Why? We have just left homes, jobs, families our own personal securities to follow you. And we are following, alam po namin, an itinerant preacher. Abig sabi nito, isang preacher na walang ang permanenting tirahan. Isang preacher who himself said, I have no house or bed where I could lay my head. Isang tao, definitely, na dapat umasa sa limos at sa tulong ng iba. There is no permanency in this guy. There is no security. Worse, nakita nila he was encountering hostility from the people who were recognized as authorities in the land of Israel. The experts in scriptures, the scribes, the Pharisees who consider themselves the elite who know the laws of God. Lahat ng mga elders Jesus was directly in contra sa kanila. And so do you follow someone whom the authorities are saying, this guy is rebel, he does not come from God? Worse, itong mismo si Jesus was warning them about the difficulties that they would encounter. And towards the end, he was talking about death, defeat, scourging, torture, rejection, and worst of all, terrible crucifixion. Paano mo susundan ang isa na kadalas ay pag nagsalita, totoo, marami kang nakikitang kababalagan, but he remains to be sometimes an aim and sometimes too difficult for them to understand. Because binabaliktad niya ang lahat at ang napakaraming mga bagay na dati alam nilang ganun. Here's the thing. When we speak of faith, it would mean reaching out to Jesus. Trusting in his power, not letting hurt and fear and violence that you confront get the upper hand, willing to take the risk and challenge that status quo, katulad niya. confidence in the midst of failure, and most of all, willing to ask Jesus what you need, what you do not understand, kung pwede niyang i-clarify. All of these are elements of faith. Hindi basta bumibigay, hindi basta sumusuko, and most of all, going to Jesus and asking, Lord, lakasan mo nga ang aming pananampalataya. 
Pananampalataya and this prayer of the disciples actually is an acceptance na ang dami pa nilang hindi na iintindihan. That they still need to grow in the way Jesus understands and look at things. That they need to evolve into change, lalo na yung kanilang mga pananaw sa mga bagay-bagay. And to rely na itong aming sinusundan is truly the Messiah. To recognize na sila, they do not have enough the power, the strength, the understanding. And to look just the same for that possibility to, to change, to progress. Ang response ni Lord sa kanila, alam nyo humingi kayo ng pananapalataya. What you need is just a seed, a, a faith as small as the most mustard seed. As, as long as it is a pure faith, as long as it is a faith that recognizes your weakness and that you need my help. Mga nakakaalam ko anong mukha ng mustard seed kasi ako inalam ko talaga at naganap ako. It is so small, minuscule nga ang tawag ng iba eh. Almost insignificant, almost nga invincible. Oh, eh, rather, na hindi mo makikita. It is so small that you would actually say, hindi mahalaga. And yet, Jesus is saying, it is not the size of the faith. It is the size of a small faith that is pure and is willing to grow. It is willing to be helped in the end that can make the miracles to happen. Jesus says, sa ganyang kaliit na pananampalata, you can move a mulberry tree and tell it, go plant yourself in the sea. Alam niyo ba kung anong mulberry tree? Nag-check up ako. Ang isang mulberry tree can grow to up to 600 years. Ang problema nitong punong ito, hindi man siya masyadong tumataas, lumalalim. Kaya, ibig sabihin, talagang naka-ano, naka-angkla to sa lupa. It is not so easy to uproot it. In fact, it is a symbol of solidity, immobility, impossible to move. And yet Jesus is saying, the one thing that can move it is but the seed of a mustard, insignificant small, and you can ask this tree to be planted in the sea. It is for this reason that today we go back to the many times Jesus speaks about faith. When he said, everything is possible for him who believes. Your faith is what will save you. Faith can move mountains today. All that you, and all that which you ask, believe that it shall be given to you. Itong lahat ng ito is an assurance on the part of Jesus na yung ating hinahanap ay pwedeng ibigay ng isang Diyos na makapangyarihan. In fact, pag-uusapan natin, what are your mulberry trees, the obstacles of your faith? What are the things that you look at it at sabihin mo, ay, wala kami magagawa dyan. I-move, i-move, hindi pwedeng i-move yan. That's too deep. That's too difficult. Jesus is just telling us a little faith which will make you to begin to do something, to make things move forward and to discover yung iyong kahinaan pero ang kalakasan naman ng iyong Diyos. Does faith remove our problems every time? The honest truth is, sometimes, sabi nga nila, di ba, prayer is not asking God to change, the, to change things. Prayer is asking God to change your attitude towards the problems. Kaya, o oh, assure ko na sa inyo, Faith does not take away the problem and our difficulties, but faith can give us peace. Because faith, firstly, is the realization na mayroon do akong isang Diyos na pinanampalatayanan. I have a God in whom I believe who has two basic characteristics. Firstly, that He is powerful, greater than my problems. Secondly, that He loves me so much. And so this faith, pag ito'y nakakuha mo, it empowers you to confront the problem. A man of faith lives in trust that this God hindi ako pababayaan. A man of faith also increases in his capacity kasi alam ko, God has given me the graces to be able to overcome all of these. 
a man of faith is a person who already actually lives like a person who has been saved. But now all he has to do is to totally abandon himself in the hands of this caring and powerful God. The problems may be there, but you will be able to accept the problems. You will be able to look at the problems and realize God has his plans. And all I could say with Mary and also with Jesus is, Thy will be done. Bakit? Sapagat alam ko naman mahal mo ako eh. Sapagat alam ko naman mas makapangyarihan ka. Kaya person of faith serenely accepts a few things. That God sometimes becomes late. Nagmamadali ka, gawin mo na to Lord. Hindi, because He has His own time. That God sometimes seemingly is so far away and He is silent. Pero sa isang nananampalataya, He accepts the silence of God. Worse, when sometimes hindi mo lamang na, parang hindi mo lamang narinig siya, kundi feeling mo absent siya. A person of faith even accepts the absence of God because he believes that God knows his needs even before we ask him. And God as a loving father will provide the best for his needs. He perceives the indifference of God Sometimes in our problem, we sometimes perceive that parang indifferent siya. But the man of faith says, in there, I can accept everything that the Lord provides because God is loving Father. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, you know, recently lamang we celebrated the feast of Padre Pio. Padre Pio, his vocation was pain. Bago pa man lang nagpakita, lumabas yung kanyang mga signs of the stigmata, he was already suffering the stigmata and people do not understand it. And so towards the end, people were saying, you are fake. Oh, drama lang lahat ng ito. And worst of all, can you imagine? Mismo sa simbahan, he was said, after all the investigations, we find you fake. At he was restricted na wag kang magmimisa kung saan marami ang tao, ang misa mo lamang magagawa mo alas 4 ng umaga para hindi pumunta ang iba. The church authorities looked at him and declared he was fake until later they changed the idea. Kaya si, si, si Padre B would say about his pain and suffering, my vocation is to suffer. But I believe that the fate of chosen souls yung mga elected, yung mga special, is to suffer. So alam niya yun. But my faith tells me that even in my suffering, it's okay. Why? Because with Jesus in the cross, with Jesus in paradise. That's faith. May isa pa tayong sinaselebrate recently lamang, October 1, the Feast of the Millennium Saint. The feast of Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, and this is these are words that came from this incredible woman of faith. Everything is possible for him who believes. No, sabi ni Saint Therese, uh, when he was confronted with all of the problems that he had, he said, "Holiness consists simply in doing God's will." Gawin mo lang yung feeling mo dapat gawin mo. We love. Him, and we want to love Him, and we want to keep loving Him in spite of our failures, in spite of the problems. Sabi pa niya, miss no single opportunity of making some small sacrifice. Here by a smiling look, there by a kindly word, but always doing the smallest right and doing it for the love of God. Yun ang key na St. Therese. Lahat ng ginagawa mo, maliit man o malaki, lahat ng ito ay nabibilang at nabavalue lamang sa pag-ibig that accompanies all of this. St. Therese would say, let us consider ourselves but servants. Every gesture we accomplish, let us ask, let us see it as an act of service in love. Ganda na, an act of service in love. For him who is present in others, let us not lose any occasion to serve, but say, it is a grace to express my love for the God whom I am serving. 
sometimes kami mga pari, preachers, o sino man mga namumuno sa sibat, we sometimes stand in awe before the faith of the lay, of people of goodwill, men and women, who do not surrender in the face of impossibilities, who though they are in the midst of a raging sea, hindi bumibigay, although they are looking at things and are not getting the results that they expected, but to continue with the love that does not give up and do not stop what they are doing before even the violence of people and do not give up or fall. Ito yung habuli natin ngayon. Atingin kay Lord. How do you know that you have faith? Someone asked. Jesus answers indicating what is the measure of faith. Being a servant. Ganun pala yan. Pag ikay natetested, to look at yourself and say, servant lang ako. I will just do what my God wants me. I believe in His power. I believe in what He is doing for me. And my glory is in that, is in this, that I have served. I will not seek for expectations of the applause of man or the approval or the gratification or the success of what we are, I am doing. I am but a servant. Why? Because ganon ang aking Diyos na sinasamba. And this is your motivation. Because you would like to be like Him. A servant who has come among us to serve And I would like to become like him in his image and likeness because Jesus is the suffering servant. And through him, I too will gain the pleasure of my father and be with him in heaven. And so now we proclaim our faith as we say, I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the faithful Father, through your Son's perfect obedience, you have shown us the way back to our dignity as your children. Hear us as we lift to you our hearts today. With confidence we say, God, help us to be obedient to your will. God, help us to be obedient to your will. For the church, may Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, deacons, and the lay faithful Work and walk together as we strive to build up your kingdom here on earth. We pray. God, help us to be obedient to your will. For all public servants, help them remain obedient to, to your will in the respective fields they are in. We pray. God, help us to be obedient to your will. For all of us gathered today, help us discern in love and truth so that we may make the right decisions this week. Help us cope with life's stresses and difficulties, bearing in mind that you are with and in us all the way, we pray. God, help us to be obedient to your will. For our viewers, the homebound and their families, continue to protect them and through the powerful intercession of our Blessed Mother, grant all intentions and requests offered through this Mass. 
we pray. God, help us to be obedient to your will. For our departed loved ones, welcome them back into your loving arms. For our beloved spiritual director, Reverend Father Mario Sabrewanite, who celebrated his birthday last September 30, may the Lord continue to fill his life with abundant grace to remain faithful and committed to his calling at all times. And may the Lord grant him a long, blessed, and peaceful life so that he may continue to inspire and win many more souls for the Lord, we pray. God, help us to be obedient to your will. For our beloved Father Mar, grant that he may be ever more conformed to you, the Divine Master. May he preach the gospel with a pure heart and clear conscience. Be a shepherd according to your own heart, single-minded in service to you and to the Church, and a shining example of a holy, simple, and joyful life, we pray. God, help us to be obedient to your will. For our departed loved ones, welcome them back into your loving arms, we pray. God, help us to be obedient to your will. I would like us to pray also especially for those who are desperate and are looking at their monthly retreats, impossibilities in life, great difficulties that they may rely on God and ask for a greater faith and confidence in his love. In a special manner, pray for my sister Teresita, whom, who has been recently found to have cancer in the brain. She does not like any more the operation, and we're praying that her faith becomes greater in ours as well. As we declare, thy will be done. Let us pray to the Lord. God, help us to be obedient to your will. God, our Father, help us to configure our hearts to your sons, so we may also become obedient to your will, always and everywhere, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, that your sacrifice in mine be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sacrificing, the sanctifying, sanctifying work but we which you are pleased to redeem us through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the salvation, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, with our cardinals and bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. is a loving our father powerful and who truly has our needs in his heart with the confidence of jesus as we ask for the increase of faith and now pray the prayer he himself taught us oh. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace by peace, I give you. Look not, Lord, in our sins but in the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. In the midst of the storm, in front of difficulties, a person of faith has peace because his God is great. His God loves him. His God is going to protect him. We share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us together pray this prayer for a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements. The Acts Catholic Prayer Community is inviting you the four-day Jesus Encounter Seminar via Zoom. This will be on October 22, 25, 27, and 29, 2022. Find out how to stay connected to the love of God through this seminar. For more information on how to register, please get in touch with Sister yes, Eileen Leonis at 0906-558-0828 or Sister Raquel Lina at 999 9398048 or Sister Laura Rodriguez at 0917-655-5298. This seminar is for free. Join us and be blessed through this encounter. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I would like to say thank you sa lahat po ng padala ng kanilang mga pagbabati at ang mga kung ako'y ipagdarasal. Mas mahalaga po yun as a uh, a couple of days ago, I celebrated my birthday. Marami pong salamat sa inyong pag-alala, pag-alala, and we hope to be seeing you soon in the Philippines. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God come upon you and remain with you always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Katulad ng mga apostles, let our prayer every day be begun with, Lord, increase our faith. Faith in knowing our God is a powerful God and our God powerfully loves us. Go in the peace and love of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Oh